Well, good evening, my stamping friends. Sorry, I'm a minute or so late. I was having some technical difficulties. <laughs> I know, Tech and I don't always get along. I try really hard to play nice, but, you know, it is what it is. Okay, so welcome, welcome. Um, for those of you perhaps finding me for the first time, I'm Leslie Percival. Um, and I teach paper crafting classes here in my Facebook page and also at my personal studio in New Hampshire. So um, this is my current host code. I will be closing it out at 9 p.m. tonight. And um, so if you order after that, don't just don't worry about it. I'll, I'll get it figured out. Um, so anyway, there's that. Okay. Also today's the last day. I'm no, it, if you are on social media anywhere, you know that today is the last day of celebration, right? Yeah. All right. So I have earned several of these host stamp sets on the scenic garden. They're very pretty. You needed to have like workshop sales of I think it was $300 or something to get one of these. Um, and I'm toying with doing some spotlighting techniques and stuff using uh, this stamp set next month in March. So, um, so here's the deal. If you are the last person, so if you're a night owl, you've got this. If you're the last one to place an online order with me tonight before midnight, mountain time. So that gives you actually till almost two in the morning here. I'm not that much of a night owl. I will not still be awake. But So if you run into any difficulties, sorry, I'm not going to be there to help you. Please do not call me. Um, not at two in the morning. But anyway, here on the East Coast, we do get a couple of extra hours. Um, so the last person to place a celebration order with me tonight will get this for free. I will mail it to you. Okay. All right. So there we go. We've talked about my host code. We've talked about the goodie I'm going to send you. Ooh, let's talk about the classes I have coming up. So all of the, um, I can't offer option two or option three for the saying thanks class, but I am going to put out um, a new link for tomorrow. I think I have five spots available for option one, which is just the card class, okay? Um, you can always order the kit or something later, but I had to know um, by last Friday so that I could get those orders in and get them here in time for class, okay? Um, monthly, March monthly card class is coming up. My monthly card class is always offered here in the studio on the second Wednesday of the month, okay? So, and at this point in time, I am offering it at two o'clock, four o'clock and six o'clock. It's a self-paced class. I offer um, baskets and um, directions. Um, I'm always here, of course. So if you have any questions or would like to see something um, demonstrated or something like that, um, I am always here for that. Okay, so tomorrow, March 1st, big day with Stampin' Up! These online exclusive products go live to you guys. Now, demonstrate, you've been seeing demonstrators creating with them, sharing them and stuff like that. These will go live to you. You may purchase them starting tomorrow. There may be others as well, but this was what we could pre-order. And I know those particular products at least will be available. There may be others. The other thing that is available beginning tomorrow is a new kit. It's called uh, the Kaleidoscope something. Um, anyway, it looks really fun, and I may um, get that. And maybe we'll even use it in class. We'll see. I've been trying to do, like, one kit card 
every month during class just to introduce everybody to the options that we have for our kits because there are many and they are fabulous. All right, so tonight's video. All right, tonight's technique. So I watched Ellen Woodbridge um, online today. She is in, I believe, Australia. Um, if I peg that um, accent correctly. <laughs> anyway, she used two, so this was one um, sample that I did based on hers. It's a little bit different color combination. But anyway, she used two non, like, greet, um, what am I trying to say? Image only stamp sets. Okay, so she used the watercolor shapes. Remember, I used that in uh, the paper pumpkin, one of the paper pumpkin cards last night. I use this actually pretty often. Now you can you can get this look a different way. Um, you can do your own stencil um, or a mask by punching or die cutting a circle or a square or a rectangle or something. Um, so you you don't have to have the stamp set, but um, I, I just find it makes it a little bit easier. Now this decorative borders stamp set is one that I might not have gravitated to in the catalog, but since I got it for free from Stampin' Up! when I went to Pittsburgh to the onstage event in November, um, I said, you know what, let's give it a shot. It's really fun and it's really pretty. I just might not have gravitated toward it in the catalog It's by itself. So we're going to combine this and the watercolor shapes and some greetings, and we're going to make some really pretty cards. Now, some of you are looking at this going, but I don't like to color. Don't worry. You're not going to have to. Let's check this out. All right, so I also brought in, and I don't know if it's going to show up in camera. This is, hey, Mel, um, this is our shimmery white cardstock. I don't, I can see the shimmer in it. I don't know if you can. Um, so when it's compared to basic white, it is, it almost appears vanilla, but next to vanilla cardstock, it definitely looks whiter. Okay. So I didn't bring a piece of vanilla with me anyway, just so you know. So I'm going to be stamping on that just to give the cards just a little bit more zip. Okay, I've got plenty of layers because I just keep adding um, grid sheets. So when one gets messy, I just put a new one on top. So I've got a good cushion. Normally when I'm using um, a big, a bold kind of um, large surface area photopolymer stamp, I suggest using um, the stamp and pierce mat. Okay, um, one that you don't pierce into that's nice and smooth. Um, and, uh, anyway, so let's, we're going to turn this sideways cause it's going to be a horizontal card and we are going to grab a couple of colors. So this particular one I'm using flirty flamingo and early espresso. Okay. So I'm going to make the rectangle flirty flamingo. Whoa, man, am I glad that landed on stamp pads and not on my cardstock. Whew, this is a pretty big block, and I maybe should have chosen a different way to do that, but yikes, sorry for the loud noise, but man alive, am I glad that didn't go all over this piece of cardstock. All right, let's try again. Let's get some ink on there. Whew, see if I can hang on to it this time. And I'm going to shoot for the middle. Now, I know some of you are more particular, and you might actually want to measure or something. You know, that's not me. Just don't do that. So we'll just give some nice, even pressure, and we'll just let that ink soak right into that cardstock for a second or two. There. Okay. All right. All 
lady tuck that over there so that's the large rectangle from this stamp set okay and and we're going to use this one because it's going to frame the corners really nicely and i'm going to stamp those i could do them in black uh, memento black I'm going to choose to use early espresso because I like to, I sometimes like to use something that is um, dark but not black. Okay, I know I see that. I think it's going to be okay. I'm not going to push super hard. There. So see, I got some of the flower colored in. I may go back and color um, some of these leaves. I haven't quite decided. I'm also thinking, I was trying to decide whether I needed one more up here. That might close it in more than I really want it to. I think I'm not going to do that this time. I may do that later, but for right now, I'm going to choose to leave it only framed in one corner, okay? All right, so then, let's see what I've got over here for markers. Oh, I've got a dark, soft succulent. I wonder what that will look like next to Flirty Flamingo. Hang on. I think I've got a little scrap. Oop, that's not what I want. Well, this will work. Okay, got a little dab of flirty flamingo. <laughs> and we're gonna close up this early espresso before I have it everywhere. And what do we think about that? Yeah, I'm okay with that. All right, so let's just add a little bit of that. Okay. This is a leaf. This is all still part of the flower, and I may or may not um, go back in and add some flirty flamingo ink to those. We'll see. Right now, I think I'm liking it without. And I'm trying to decide if this is a leaf or part of the flower. Feel, that one feels like it could be part of the flower. This is most definitely a leaf. I think I'm going to leave that one. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Then we're going to take also in the early espresso because I don't, again, don't want it black. All right. And I have this thinking of you with all my heart. I have a friend that just got some pretty intense news yesterday. And so I am thinking I will send this to her. There. And I do like where some of the greeting um, goes out over the edge. I could have this, this greeting would have fit all the way inside, and that could have been a thing, but I chose not to have it be a thing. All right, so let's clean that one off. All right. 
So then I made a uh, early espresso layer. Okay, so this this layer is three and three quarters by five. This one is four by five and a quarter. Okay, because I am not one of those eighths of an inch tiny tiny border person. Okay, it just makes me crazy. All right, so I have some stamp and seal. We'll just put a little there. get that. There we go. Whoops. Stuck to my finger. It's trying to move. There we go. And if I have any worries about ink still being damp, I just turn it over and rub from the back so that I don't smear anything. And then we will add... Oh, you don't want to... You don't want to start there, my friend. There it goes. Okay. All right. And then I brought, just for a little bit of pizzazz, I brought the iridescent pearls. And we're going to use my uh, take take your pick tool. Or are you there, Barbara? Because my friend Barbara calls it the pick-me-up tool, which I also really like. It's a great, great name for this tool. And this really is one of those things. You know what I meant to do this afternoon and I didn't do it was put a list together of all my tools, my favorite tools, and see if it was going to add up to $50. For those of you who don't have all the favorite tools yet. All right, I think we'll put one more little one down there. So three pearls, because you gotta go in odd numbers. I suppose, oh, you know what? Hold on. Five is also an odd number. So we'll put a big one down here. So a big one and a little one, a big one and a little one, and one more little one right over there. There, love it, okay. All right, so there's that, that one, and I've got another one I wanna use, um, use the circle out of that, and Oh, you know what? I wanted to show you something. So let me take this off the block. Let me put that over there. Okay, so these are are curved, some of these. Okay, um, this is that corner one. Oh, I didn't pull that. I thought I did, but I didn't. Okay, so we'll put that corner one back in here. And I'm going to pull this curvy one. Okay, now I could unintentionally stretch it out of shape okay so what I want to do is make sure just checking that it doesn't feel real right now oh, I guess it's there okay um, I'm gonna just lay it I'm just gonna drop it right there on my grid paper and then use the block to pick it up so that I don't twist it out of shape. Now, there are times when I might want to take something and give it a curve, okay? Like I might want, say this, to be a curve, okay? Which I can do, okay? I don't know how well you can see that, but I can force that into a curvy shape. Let me show you what I mean. So that is this stamp right here, nice and straight, right? Well, what if I don't want it to be straight? What if I want it to be curvy? I can do that. 
because the photopolymer, um, you can shape them, okay? But if I don't want to shape them, if I want to be sure that I am getting what was intended, um, then it's easiest to just th um, put the stamp down and then pick it up on my block. Okay, so now I have the circle, I have the curvy one, and I have another piece of shimmery white cardstock. Just gonna, I've got another color combination that I want to try out with you. I just want to pop up and see what I'm getting for, <laughs> for comments. Oh, hello, Doreen and Janice. I'm glad you're here. And thank you very much. These are really fun. So I think you're going to like this one. Um, I went to my little um, color coach notebook and I decided to try soft sea foam and blackberry bliss together. I think those will look really nice. And so soft sea foam is a super light color. It's, I may have to do more than one inking, which probably means I should have brought my Stamparatus over, but, and for this one I'm going to go just a tiny bit uh, higher than, um, than the middle. Oh yeah, it's really light. Okay, let's see if we can't layer on one more layer of color. I might have to do another one. Oh boy. Let's see. It's really hard. I sh definitely should have grabbed my Stamparatus. Let's see if I'm even close. Uh, not too far off. Not too far off. It's getting darker, so let me try one more time. So this is when the Stamparatus would be super helpful. And right now, I think, I'm pretty sure the Stamparatus is right around the $50 mark. So if you have never used one, I will tell you that they're a really great tool. And if I had been thinking about this, okay, there, that's better. Now you can almost see that color. Yeah, I don't think I have to do another one, but three layers. <laughs> Unless I had re-inked my pad really recently, that probably would have um, helped a bit. Okay, so let's take that curvy one and the Blackberry Bliss and ink this up. And hopefully... This is going to work just, oh, that is looking good. So let's see. I think I want it just about like this. Now, if you're going to use like a blender pen or something on here, I'm just giving that just a second to transfer all that ink then my suggestion is um, you use colors that play well together. I'm hoping these are going to be okay. Um, let me grab ah, the blender pen. So a blender pen has that name, blender pen, but they are, it is very different than the Stampin' Blends. Okay, Two completely different things. These are alcohol-based markers in various colors. This has no color at all. It's just a wet, um, acid-free brush, wet brush. I don't even know what is in for the fluid. I don't even know what's in it. But I, didn't, I do know that there used to be a recipe flying around out there that you could um, refill these, but I've since stopped trying to do that. So I'm just going to move some of that Blackberry Bliss ink into some of these flowers. Now I'm not sure how the Blackberry Bliss is going to play with the soft sea foam, so I'm going to concentrate on the flowers that aren't 
on the circle very much because I'm not sure how that's gonna because soft seafoam is a very pale green and I'm just not sure um, well let's just give this one a whirl because we can take a little more of that ink over oh that's it's playing pretty nice if I don't go over it a whole lot and if I brought some more in it probably would play just fine so let's give that pad a squeeze. Oh, I guess I got to be stronger than that. Give it a good squeeze. There we go. Now we got a nice little puddle of ink. Okay, let's pick up a little bit more and come in and start where. There we go. We'll start on one of the, the lines and then just add a little bit more. Okay, we'll do this one. Start on a line and just bring some of that in. Oh, this is turning out really pretty. I like this a lot. Okay. So I'm starting where there's already a pretty dark line and then just adding just a little bit more. Let's go add a little bit more here. I'm going to just lighten that up a little bit. I don't want to get it too dark. I do want to add just a little bit more here. So the storm we were supposed to get sort of finked out on us, which I suppose is okay. It meant we didn't have to shovel. But... Rich was a little frustrated because he didn't get to, he didn't choose to go up to work thinking it, the weather was going to be too bad to drive. And then it really wasn't, so he could have been doing some, some work up there. Oh, well. All right, there we go. All right, we've got one more over here, and the rest are leaves, and I may... Um, I'll think about what color I want to do those leaves because I don't think I'm going to want to use that dark succulent and I definitely think we need darker than soft sea foam. There. Okay. Oh, that is so pretty. So then when you've got your, um, when you're finished with your blender pen, and you've got some, some ink, you just rub it on a piece of scrap paper and you just keep turning it and rubbing it and turning it and rubbing it until you, you don't get any more color. Now you may, oh, look at me, what a mess. Um, you may end up with some a little bit of staining on the tip, but that's not gonna hurt anything. You're not gonna carry ink through as long as you make sure it runs clear, okay? And those are um, three, you get three in a package, and I think they're somewhere in the neighborhood of ten or twelve dollars. I can't remember exactly. All right, so let's see. Since I seem to be having difficulty getting birthday cards in the mail, I'm not sure why. I make them. I make beautiful birthday cards. I just seem to have a hard time getting them in an envelope with a stamp to the post office. That just seems like the extra steps that I have trouble doing. <laughs> I don't know what is wrong with me. Anyway, I love this saying from the Something Fancy stamp set, which is what I've, I've taken a couple of greetings from, this Something Fancy, and I love this one. I didn't forget your birthday. I'm just stretching out the celebration. <laughs> All right. So let's put that right about there. So we'll just give it a second. There we go. All right. Okay. Good. Now, let 
let's see here. I had those colors. Oh, they're there. So I chose a soft sea foam base, um, partly because the inside is so nice and easy to write on. And then I chose the Blackberry Bliss as the layer because I thought that would help it just pop right off of there. And then I think that soft sea foam out here will just bring just that little bit of attention to that. So let's put that together. All right. So a little here, a little here, a little here. Okay. There we go. Now you could, if you're the, a ribbon person, you could do some ribbon. You could um, you could do a lot of different things, but I really liked those iridescent pearls, so I decided I would choose those today for all of these cards. And next week I've got a. Um, vellum technique to share with you so make sure you're here next Tuesday the 7th okay where'd I put the oh it's right here next to the I sure wish I could hear you guys shouting at me to tell me where things were when I lose them on the desk because they're there I know they're here all right let's see how do we want this to go. I think what I want to do is put the big one here and a little one here like that. Um, maybe not. Oops. Well, now I picked up the, the dot and not the adhesive, so we're going to try and get that on the... Whoops. Oh, what a mess I'm making for that. Okay. There we go. And then we'll put another little one up here, kind of mixed in there. And then we kind of get that triangle. I was kind of wanting to move that down a little bit. Well, I guess I could try moving this one. Ah, up a little. Okay, I like that better. That's much better. Now, is that? Okay, I think that's okay. All right, what a mess. I I was not this messy earlier. I got I made a mess tonight. That's okay. Messy is good. It means the creative juices are flowing. So, we have the Soft Sea Foam and Blackberry Bliss version. We have the Flirty Flamingo and early espresso version and then we have the one that I did before using the small rectangle in actually crushed curry and then Bermuda Bay and I liked that these two colors played really nicely together because I could take the blender pen and mix the um, Bermuda Bay with that crushed curry and get almost a parakeet party a nice bright green for the for the leaves. Now I could go back in with like a dark, I don't know how this is going to look. This is a dark daffodil delight. Um, let's just try it. Um, my mother will love to get this card if it looks yucky. <laughs> it, it won't get, look yucky. So let's, oh yeah, that's actually very good. That dark daffodil looks really nice. So we've actually got three different yellows on this one. Okay, so the I chose So Saffron as the base because crushed curry just felt way too strong as a base. And then we've got the, the Bermuda Bay here. So we've got the crushed curry ink, but the uh, dark daffodil delight blend is adding just enough color to deepen that up so that it shows up nicely. Ooh, I'm liking this. 
this was a good choice. Sometimes you make those choices and you go, oh crud, I worked so hard on that card and now I hate it. <laughs> not that it's a mistake, right Barbara? It's not a mistake. It's just sometimes the choices we make just, they don't come out in person the way we thought they were going to in our head. You know, they look a little different in person than they did in our brain. And sometimes that's frustrating. But this one is coming out and doing a really nice thing. So I'm really liking that. Yippee, skippy. All right, let's finish this one up because I've got to let you guys get going. Because you certainly don't want to sit here and watch me color all night. And I need to get home and... Uh, get some things finished up. Watch the kids' baking championship. Our spectrum was acting really funny last night. It wasn't letting us use the guide. It wasn't, it was just being weird. So we, um, we've got some stuff to watch tonight. And then it will be bedtime. Oh, I'm so happy about this. Looks so good. Almost is making this look Mango Melody. These two colors together are almost making it look like I stamped these flowers separate in Mango Melody. Okay, so there we go. Whoops, let's have that one right side up, shall we? <laughs> so this one, the way I did this particular one before I send you off, I stamped the greeting first. It is not how, um, what did I say her name was, Elaine? Elaine Woodbridge? Anyway, that is not how she did it, but I felt like I could gauge off of the greeting best if I did that one first and then I just turned the stamps. I think I used this one. So I was able to just add the the rectangle on both, you know, and then I had had the the words um to decide about how far apart I wanted them. And um so anyway, really fun. So I hope that um, you take a look through your collection and see if you have some um, image only stamps that you could combine with either this watercolor shapes or a stencil of color. You can even do the, the block technique where you ink your, your block and do that. Um, and, and give it a try and share what you do because I'd love to see them. All right, so I think that's all. So remember, the last person to put in a celebration order tonight earns that stamp set for free, okay? All right, so um, <laughs> um and I will try and get back to these questions because I see a comment that I need to um, to respond to. Um, but I uh, I definitely um, I can't do it right now. So I will go through the comments and I will um, respond to them and answer any questions. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. And um, I. Look forward to seeing you next week on the seventh. Oh, and if you are a you are a um, what's the word that I want? Um, superstitious person. Before you say anything tomorrow on the first, say rabbit, rabbit. It's supposed to bring you good luck 
all, all month. All right. Rabbit, rabbit, you guys. Bye.